So hey hello welcome to another video and in this video I'll be talking about data types in programming. So first of all what is meant by these data types? So the term itself the term data type itself says that it is nothing but the type of data. The type of data that we are dealing with is what we call as data types. So uh, for example, when I say types of data, you understand that there are actually different types of data. For example, you can say, uh, I'll just write a number like this, I'll just write a number 2 here, and this 2 is a data. And what type of data it is? It is a number. Right? Yes, it is a number. We all know that 2 is a number. And similarly, I'll write a letter. For example, I'll write A here. And a here is also data but what type of data it is it is not a number because we know a is not a number but what is it it is a letter or a character right it is a character a is not a number it's a character 2 is not a character it's a number and similarly I'll write something like T E J A Teja so here we know that this thing over here is my name. It's not a number and it's not a character as well. Instead, it is a series of characters or a sequence of characters because T over here individually it's a character, E individually is a character, J and A are also individually characters. So it's not a character technically, it's not also a number but it is a set of character or a sequence of characters which we call as string. Right? So similarly, there are actually different types of data that we will have to deal with when we are writing a program. So this is what we call or this is what meant by data types. So another question, why is this whole concept of data types linked with programming? I mean, why do we need to work on or why do we need to stress about the type of the data that we are dealing with or writing in our program? Why? Why do we actually need to consider the type of data? Well, that is because compilers need to know the type of data they are dealing with. So, when I said compilers, you can recall from previous videos that a job of a compiler is to first check the syntax errors, check if everything is right, everything is grammatically correct in your program and if it's, any, if it's if anything is wrong it returns a syntax error and then it converts your source code which is a high level language which can't be directly understood by a computer it converts it to a low level code which is a machine code or an intermediate byte code, right? So while uh, converting it or while ch first checking the gram grammar and then converting it into a machine or a bytecode so the compilers need to actually make sure that you are using the data types in the right way because if you don't use the data types in the right way your program will fail to execute and also your computer has different ways your computer's processor has different way of processing different types of data for example your processor your computer processes the data the data to as a number right and and in order to process a number it has a different way it cannot process 2 as a because a is a character 2 is a number so these both have different ways of processing uh, so your computer needs to actually know what what type of data it is so it knows how to process that that particular type of data and how to uh, do processing with it and how to give you the the desired output right so that's why we actually need or we actually should really be careful about the type of data that we are that we are writing or using in our programs and you can see the examples right there the there are different types of data which is number like I've told you character or a sequence of character which is a string that is what we call technically right so these are the five basic data types so the first one is an integer and when I say integer I mean numbers like basically numbers without any fractional part and number two the second data type is uh, the numbers which actually have the decimal part or the fractional part right and the 
third data type is a character which is uh, any basically any character and the fourth one is a sequence of characters which we know is called as string and the fifth one is a boolean now i'll be talking about each and every data type uh, individually and i'll be explaining you what that data type is uh, is about so first uh, let's start with integers so obviously as i've told you earlier integers is nothing but numbers with oh sorry uh, numbers with uh, no decimal part right so this data type integer is divided into four subcategories and why is it divided because each of these data types which actually belong to the main category integers they they hold different sizes of data for example you can see the first data type is byte so byte is nothing but an integer data type but it can hold only up to one byte of data which means eight bits one byte is equal to eight bits right so if you are using a byte data type remember you must always remember that you must you can only hold data which is not more than one byte and to be more precise it can store numbers or it can represent numbers which are in the range one minus 128 to plus 127 because if you convert uh, any number within this range minus 128 to 127 into a binary it will not exceed eight bits so if you can do the math you can do the conversion from decimal to binary you will get it right and the second uh, and the second subcategory of data type is a short data type this is what I'm talking about and a short data type as you can see here it holds up to two bytes which means 16 bits of data so to be more precise you can hold or you can represent numbers which are in this range minus 32,768 to 32,767 because uh, any number within this range uh, when converted to binary it will not exceed 16 bits you can do the math once again to check it if yourself and the third type is the most commonly used type which is an int right int and it can hold up to four bytes of data which means it can hold uh, any number which is within this range and I don't like to read that number out because I really don't know how to read that number but you get the idea any number can be stored as an integer data type if and only if it's not more than four bytes in size and the last one which is the largest uh, subcategory of integer data type is long right it's long and it's it can hold up to eight bytes which means eight into eight bits right and uh, it can hold numbers within this range which is a very 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 long range uh, uh, this one over here so yeah while uh, using an integer data type while while you're dealing with numbers without any decimal any decimal parts you must uh, choose one of these four data types so one of these four data types you must choose uh, uh, based on uh, the size of the data that you will be using in your program but the most commonly used data type among all of these things is int because yeah it holds a reasonable uh, reasonably high numbers uh, within this range over here and reasonably low numbers as well which uh, which is uh, until this negative number over here so the most common commonly used data type is an int data type but based on your needs based on your program you will be uh, you should be able to decide which data type to use based on the size of the data that you're writing or you're storing in your program. So yeah, that's all about integer data types. So let's go to the next data type, which is uh, decimal numbers. So decimal numbers, as I've told you earlier, an integer cannot be processed as a decimal number by your computer and a decimal number cannot be processed as an integer by your computer so we need different data types for a number with no fractional part and a number with a fractional part so once again in this whole category of decimal numbers there are two subcategories there are two subcategories the first one is a float data type uh, this one I'm talking about a float data type once again as you can see it can hold up to four bytes of data four bytes of data to be more precise it can store fractional numbers sufficient for storing six to seven decimal digits so for example something like 
uh, uh, 236.123456 so it can hold up to uh, it's a sufficient for storing up to six to seven decimal digits now the next subcategory is a double and uh, they're they're also the same except for the the amount of data they can represent or they can store and same is the case with the integer data types all of them can hold integer numbers but the only difference is the amount of data the maximum amount of data that they can represent or that they can store right and uh, uh, coming back double can hold up to eight bytes of data and uh, here it says sufficient for storing uh, 15 decimal digits so once again based on your program based on your needs you must decide which of these uh, two data types to use if you are dealing with a number with a decimal point or numbers with decimal points in your program so coming to the next data type it is character right so I've already told you what's meant by a character it's basically uh, any character right and you can see that the maximum size that a character data type can hold is two bytes you can see two bytes is the maximum size uh, that a character data type can represent or it can store so uh, here it says uh, it stores a single character or letter or ascii values so um, one more thing is that while you are using a character or while you are representing a character in your program you must always enclose a character within a single quote so if i want to represent or if you want if i want to write a character that is uh, let's say capital a then i have to enclose it within a single quote like this same is the case with capital B or same is the case with at the rate symbol or same is the case with hashtag or even if you have the letter 2 a letter 2 without any single quotes will be uh, interpreted as a number because yeah it's an integer so it will be interpreted as a number by the compiler but if you enclose this number 2 inside single quotes like this then it will be considered as a character so one thing you must remember is that anything that is enclosed within single quotes is taken or interpreted as a character by your uh, compiler by your languages compiler I mean so yeah and one more thing character doesn't only mean that you you can you you will be able to represent the English alphabet it's basically any ASCII you can represent any ASCII value or letter right so if you don't know what's meant by an ASCII value, I would uh, suggest you to Google it. It's a, it's a really, uh, really simple concept. So you can just type in ASCII tables in Google search and you will you will get to know about what's meant by an ASCII value. So that's all about a character data, data type. So the next data type is a string data type. And a string data type is nothing but a set of characters. A set of characters. Uh, together that's right that's what is meant by a string or you can also call it a sequence of characters so for example if I write something like uh, if I write something like Apple this is a set of characters together and if I write something like Apple one two three this is also a string and if I write something like Apple one two at the rate hashtag this is also a string so basically uh, a string is a set of characters or you can also call it an array of characters right and one more thing is that when you're writing a string or when you're representing a string in your program you must always enclose a string within double quotes like this right so you have to always uh, enclose a string within double quotes just like this and hey for example if you have the value 2 like this if you mention 2 just like this it will be interpreted interpreted as a number but if you enclose it with a single quote like this it will be guess what it will be interpreted as a character but if you enclose it within double quotes like this it will be interpreted as a string by the compiler so yeah it all depends on the way you're writing that particular data in your program and Another thing is that uh, this this one over here, which says single quote, 
uh, I mean a character a small small air uh, enclosed within a single quote it will be represented as a character but if you enclose it within double quotes like this it will be interpreted as a string so all so always remember that when you are writing a string you must enclose it within double quotes so anything which is enclosed within uh, the double quotes is always considered as a string by the compiler so string is nothing but a set of characters together or it is uh, nothing but a sequence of characters or you can also call it an array of characters and it's useful for storing text to be more precise it's useful for storing any kind of text which can have numbers it can have letters it can have special characters it can have any character so that's the use of string and now we'll be coming to the final thing the final data type which is a boolean data type right a boolean data type is a little it little bit different than as compared to the other data types and you can see that the size of the boolean data type is just one bit one bit which means you can only represent either 0 or 1 using a boolean data type so you might ask me what is the need how can boolean data type be useful it's only it can only hold up to one bit well if you want to represent true or false in your program then boolean is the way to go because boolean can as you can see uh, it can hold only up to one bit which means if it's true it's going to be one if it's false it's going to be zero so it's basically a decision making kind of thing true or false no other things just s or no no other explanation so if you if you have any any necessity of using a uh, decision making something like that which 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 can only be true or false yes or no then you can make use of boolean and it also occupies very less space in the memory as you can see it's only one bit so yeah boolean is the way to go if you if you have only two values to hold uh, basically if anything in your program uh, is only dealing with either of the two values you can use boolean because it it, it uh, represents either true or false and it cannot represent anything else so yeah that's all about boolean and now we have spoken about all the five types of data all the five data types and i think now we are ready to go now we are ready to deal with these data types now we are ready to uh, write a program which involves data types which involves variables and all that kind of stuff so let's jump into the programming tutorial <laughs>